Hello everyone, my name is Jason, aka Bacon Chest, coach of the St Kilda Superiors, and welcome to week one of the PBL. Uh, this is going to be my team builder and match against I Make You Rage and the Dallas Rapidash. So, firstly we're going to go over their team. Um, so, they have quite a threatening squad, uh, with a few very, very fast mods. My team in general is quite fast, um, as you would have seen in the team builder, but this team is just ridiculously fast. Um, so let's just go through their mons uh, briefly. So they've got Magiana, obviously a massive threat, can set up, can be very bulky and defensive. Soul Heart um, means that it's always a threat no matter how defensive you run it because it'll get those special attack boosts really easily with amazing coverage. Um, Zygarde, obviously a threat with DD or Coil. Um, Choice Band obviously can punch holes in teams. Mew, huge versatility, uh, can be a lure set, can be a defensive set, can defog, can set up rocks. Um, very, very versatile on. Mega Aerodactyl, huge threat to my team. Fast as all hell, um, gets basically perfect coverage with Stone Edge, Ice Fang, and Fire Fang against my team, so it can hit Landorus and Sizzle, which are probably my two best kind of physical checks. Um, if he runs a home claws set, I could be in a lot of trouble. Um, Weavile, again, really, really fast, dark coverage, um, gonna hit a lot of things on my team, uh, given that my dark resist is Verizion, um, that's not great. Um, Tentacruel has a pretty good matchup against my team, uh, is also a rapid spinner, which could be really crucial, um, I expect either Tentacruel or Delmize and probably Tentacruel to come to this match, um, then we have Jolteon, again, very, very fast, uh, not as strong, so I'm not quite as worried about that. Exploud, obviously, um, choice specs user. Boom Burst is going to hit really hard. Uh, Delmize, good physical attacker, um, but susceptible to fire. And, you, you know, you can see I've got the type weaknesses there. I've got a fair bit of access to types that can hit it quite hard, um, so I'm not too worried about that. Hitmonlee, yet another Rapid Spinner, so we've got three Rapid Spinners on this team. Um, uh, fighting type, powerful, reckless high jump kicks, not really expecting it to come. Um, Miss Magius, uh, powerful ghost type, but its speed tier lets it down a bit in this matchup. Um, as I said, I've got a fairly fast team, I don't necessarily expect Miss Magius to come because it doesn't really fit. Uh, Ninjask, very, very fast Pokemon with speed boost, um, although with Baton Pass being banned in this league, I'm not really sure what he's trying to do with it. Um, again, not really expecting it to come in this matchup because I have things um, that kind of hard wall it like Scizor, um, and like Lando T, so yeah, wasn't too worried about those. Um, but generally I was sort of expecting, <clears throat> um, Magiana, Mew, Mega Aerodactyl, Weavile, um, and then probably Tentacruel as the spinner, and then maybe Jolteon, or, um, Mew as the sort of six mod there, that, that was kind of the six I was expecting. Uh, with Magiana obviously being the big threat. Uh, maybe Zygarde as well was probably the other one. So let's go over the team that we decided to bring. So the first one I decided to bring was Yachi Berry Landorus. This was sort of what I was hoping to pick up a sweep with. Um, Earthquake Stone Edge knockoff hits basically his entire team um, quite well. Yachi Berry allows us to live any hit, um, particularly with max HP. Um, and, and Intimidate, so we've got a few different options as to mons we could set up on. Um, don't need any speed, because um, we, we don't need to outspeed people on the turn that we're setting up, and after plus two, we outspeed literally everything. Um, so that was pretty good. And yeah, Adamant, Earthquake, Adamant Max Attack, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Knockoff. Going to do a huge number if I can get rocks up and keep them up, then that was going to be really effective. Next up we had Mega Scizor, um, Bullet Punch, Swords Dance, U-Turn, Defog. Uh, I was really, really tossing up between Defog and Roost, but I didn't want to be too susceptible to um, potential T-Spikes from Tentacruel. Um, like, T-Spikes plus Stealth Rocks could have been potentially an issue. Um, so yeah, I did want I did want to have access to Defog. Obviously Bullet Punch um, can put in a bit of work against things like Mega Aerodactyl and Weavile. Um, U-turn just for momentum. Um, the defense was to allow, allow us to live hits uh, better from Weavile and I think particularly Mega Aerodactyl. I think this spread allows us to live a Fire Fang, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and just a tiny bit of speed. Uh, trying to think what that would be for. On any one. I think for X Bloud, maybe? Um, probably for an X Bloud. 
is probably what we're looking at there. Although it's hard to tell because this is obviously the base form, um, rather than the Mega. Uh, next up, Choice Scarf uh, Volcanion. Choice Scarf outspeeds basically everything on his team except for uh, Mega Aerodactyl, which like can't outspeed even if I had run max speed um, Timid. Um, but it was outspeeding everything up to and including an Adamant Weavile. Um, which basically just leaves the Jolteon, um, the yeah, the Jolteon, the Mega Arrow, and the Ninjask. Obviously, I'm not worried about the Ninjask. Uh, Mega Arrow and Jolteon, I'm really not going to be staying in on anyway. Um, but obviously, neither of them can really switch in on me, so that was okay. Um, and that allowed us to run 252 Modest, which means that we're putting out huge damage. It doesn't really have particularly good uh, water resists. Like it's basically tentacle, so we've got Earth Power there to hit that. Um, and, you know, obviously Steam Eruption is still going to do a fair bit of damage, particularly with that chance to burn. Um, Delmise isn't really taking a hit from this, particularly since I can obviously have the potential to click Flamethrower, because he doesn't really have particularly good fire resists either, right? Like, you know, when your fire resist is like Mega Aerodactyl and then also Tentacruel, um, we can potentially put him work. Particularly since we also have Choice Specs, Greninja, Battle Bond Greninja, um, Surf, because I don't like missing Hydro Pumps, uh, Dark Pulse, uh, because that coverage goes really well and lets me hit um, Assault Vest Elmise effectively. Uh, Ice Beam to hit, hit a potential bulky Zygarde. Um, and Water Shuriken for a priority to potentially uh, get sort of last minute KOs. Um, the, yeah, these, these two are pretty simple sets. Um, just big offensive monsters to try and punch holes um, and leave things weakened for Landorus to potentially clean up in the late game. Then we had Necrozma, so this was our dedicated lead. Um, the point of this set was that it could basically live a hit from anything. Um, it uh, ta tanks hits from Magiana pretty well, it tanks hits from Weavile, it tanks hits from uh, Zygarde, it tanks hits from Mew, uh, I think it even tanks... Yeah, it's, it's basically with Prison Armor, it tanks hits from everything, sets up rocks, uh, earthquake to hit the uh, Magiana, Toxic to hit everything else. Um, yeah, pretty simple set. Uh, I did initially have Stone Edge because uh, after Rock's damage it KO'd Mega Aerodactyl, but I didn't want to rely on hitting Stone Edge when I could just as easily click Toxic. Um, and that gave me a slightly better um, options against something like the Zygarde, although obviously a sub coil set would have been quite problematic. Uh, lastly, we have our Magiana check, and this is Rotom Heat. Um, just max bulk, max special attack modest with toxic Volt Switch overheat pain split. Uh, Volt Switch, you know, lets us, gives us momentum, um, particularly with Mega Scizor as well. That gave us some pretty good options for maintaining momentum. Uh, overheat does huge damage to Magiana, um, and I think two hit KOs, uh, even after the special attack drop. Pain split, potentially, to get some recovery back and increase our longevity along with leftovers, and toxic just to stall things like the Zygarde on the Switch, um, or potentially like a Mew, or something like that. Um, so yeah, let's see how the game went. So, as you can see, you decided to bring sort of a fair bit of the stuff I bought, I thought. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, like all of these were on our shortlist, I wasn't really expecting the Zygarde, but yeah, Magiana, Tentacruel is the spinner made the most sense because it checks Volcanion and um, Greninja. Uh, Weavile, um, yeah, Weavile and Mew, Put in a fair bit of work. Uh, choice specs, boom burst, um, Explat is a threat to any team. But yeah, I'm a little bit surprised to see the Zygarde over the Mega Aerodactyl. Um, but I suppose he was fearing the Scizor um, a lot because obviously it puts in a huge number on it, whereas it can't necessarily do as well against Zygarde. So um, as I said, I've got Necrozma as my dedicated lead. Leads off with the Mew. Um, goes for a Wisp turn one. That's a bit annoying because it means my dam earthquake damage will be a lot less. Um, but I'm happy to get rocks up. Um, forces him to spin, potentially spin later. He gets his own rocks up as I go for a Toxic, which is nice. So um, we're able to get some uh, chip off on the Mew, and that'll decrease its longevity later in the game. So that's nice, because I know he's probably a physically defensive or specially defensive set. Uh, we go for an Earthquake on the Switch, because I was maybe expecting the Tentacle or the Magiana to want to come out. Um, but he goes out to Exploud. Uh, I decide to click another Toxic here. I don't really have a particularly good switch in. We unfortunately miss the Toxic, um, which kind of sucks uh, because it means this uh, Exploud, um, yeah, is going to have a bit more longevity as the game goes on. 
Um, I then make a misplay and go for Toxic again when obviously the switch into either Tentacruel or Magina is fairly obvious here. Um, goes out to the Magina, so that like decreases my momentum a bit. So I just go out into Rotom because obviously, as I said, it's my dedicated response. Um, takes 10% from Flash Cannon, <laughs> so that's doing absolutely nothing. Um, as I just go for the Volt Switch there, knowing that like the chances of him going into Zygarde on uh, on like the initial turn that my Rotom is out there are very low. I could potentially have a offensive HP Ice, um, and he knows that Magina can't do anything, so I can I can afford to predict there. Um, so we're able to bring out uh, Greninja on the switch into Mew, uh, which obviously is pretty great because now he's going to have to go into um, the Tentacruel. Oh no, sorry, or the Magina. He actually goes out to the Magina, which is a very, very defensive, bulky Magina. Um, and so I just decided to go and sack Necrozma to the Floor Cannon. Um, I just didn't want to take too much damage on my Rotom. Uh, but now we can go out to Volcanion, and we obviously outspeed because we're Scarfed. Um, I click the Flamethrower here, not wanting to over-predict. Goes out to the Tentacruel, and I'm like, oh, I don't really have a particularly good switch in the Tentacruel. So that was probably a bit of a misplay there. I should have just gone for the Earth Power. Um, knowing that he doesn't he doesn't have a ground immunity on this team, so Earth Power, it's not like Earth Power is doing, like it's doing pretty good damage to anything. It would have hit McGinnis super effectively. And I just don't have a good switch in for Tentacruel, right? Like, you know, if he um, clicks... Uh, a water move, then I can't bring out Scizor or Rotom. If he clicks an ice move, I can't bring out Landorus. And um, Greninja doesn't want to take the damage, and Volcanion can't really do much damage because I'm locked into uh, Flamethrower or Steam Eruption. So yeah, that was a bit of a, a bit of a poor play there. Um, as you can see, he punished me by going for a Rapid Spin. So yeah, I could have easily gotten off two Earth Powers there and knocked him out. So. On Fort, um, so we see on this turn, I bring out Landorus, um, because I knew I could tank hits, um, with, um, my Yachi Berry and the fact that I have pretty good bulk. Um, he actually goes for the Ice Beam, and I eat my Yachi Berry, and then I go for the Earthquake and he eats his Sugar Berry, so <laughs> we see that, unfortunately for me, um, he actually outspeeds because, um, well, technical naturally outspeeds. I don't know how much speed he was running, but I'm running absolutely none, so that's a bit unfortunate. And he lives the Earthquake with 2%, so that was that broke my balls a bit. Um, particularly if I clicked an Earth Power, even if I'd had to switch out afterwards, um, we would have definitely killed. So yeah, that was a bit annoying, because now I have to um, switch out my Landorus. Um, I, look, I am very happy, because I was very tempted to click Rock Polis on that turn, and if I had, I would have not, I would have eaten the sugar bear, he would have eaten the sugar bear the next turn and just knocked me out, so that would have been terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know the Ice Beam is coming out again, so we're just going to go out into Volcanion, um, and I'm just like, cool, I can just click Steam Eruption. Um, I didn't want to click Scald, even though I had Scald there, um, as an option, just as a backup water move that would hit 100% of the time, and I didn't click Scald there because I didn't want to give McGianna um, the ability to come in afterwards and threaten me out. Um, where Steam Eruption, like, obviously does huge damage, um, to anything. <sighs> Should have really killed this gold. Realistically, Megana was gonna force me out regardless. Um, Zygarde would have forced me out regardless. Um, yeah. So, we missed the Steam Eruption with that 5% chance, which is just a bit of a ball breaker, but that's okay. Um, we go for it the next turn, get the damage, and yeah, now we're down to 28%. So, I see the Zygarde come out, and I'm like, look, I if he sets up here, I'm in a lot of trouble, given that my Landorus is weakened. Um, I need Scizor to win the game, and Greninja's going to take a ton from E-Speed. So I check the calcs, and a regular, a, a D-Dancing Zygarde couldn't kill me with extreme speed here. Um, like, it was just an adamant max attack. So given that, and given the fact that, like, I was... Um, he might have expected me to try and save this because it is because it will live another rock switch in and because he knows that it's scarf so it outspeeds his entire team i'm fairly certain um i decide to just throw off the steam eruption and hope that we can get the burn um and we do which is super nice because yeah he does just go straight for the dd um as yeah he's able to just kill me off with a thousand arrows on the next turn um after that, yeah, I'm able to bring out Greninja, and this is where I was like, cool, so this is fine. All I need to do 
is Water Shuriken. I'll get my Ash Greninja. Um, and now, after that, then I like threaten his entire team. Even Magiana is not really going to want to take Choice Specs Surf. Um, like, it'll live it, but it's not necessarily going to be able to switch in repeatedly on it. Um, so that would have given me a lot more momentum in this battle. Um, so yeah, I just click Water Shuriken here, and as you can see, I need three hits, and I get two. <laughs> And even though he's at minus one, uh, and that was the other thing, is I was like, well, even at, mi like at minus one, he can't actually kill me with anything. Um, I think even an outrage was, outrage was only doing about 70%. Um, but he unleashes the Tectonic Rage, and down goes Greninja. So now I'm really in the back. We're down 5-3. Um, we don't really have a lot of options left. I can go out to Scizor now. I can click Blood Punch. Um, Oh no, sorry, no, I know that he can't do any damage to me because I'm Mega Sizzle, so I decided to go for an SD. Um, in hindsight, that was probably a bit of a misplay, to be honest, because um, that left me a bit weakened. Um, when, realistically, again, it was always going to force me out with the potential HP fire, and there was no way I was killing with plus two bullet punch. Um, I go for the overheat there, and... Um, yeah, uh, so... Yeah, so... Having been forced out with my scissor, I'm obviously forced back out into Rotom Heat once again, um, which is now starting to get really worn down, um, as, um, yeah, it takes the HP fire out obviously quite well, and then he brings out the Mew on my overheat, I do about 48%, so now the Mew, uh, the toxic damage is wearing it down, and so I'm thinking, okay, we can just Volt Switch here, but I forget that obviously Mew learns Roost, um, that was just a massive brain fade there that obviously there was no reason why he couldn't just click roots there um and the problem with that is is that now i have to bring out scissor because lando doesn't outspeed and so the mew is now able to get a burn off because bullet punch isn't killing from that range and that's basically game like i can't really do a lot from this point um he goes down mcgana comes out and i'm gonna try and switch around over here we go out to rotom um it tanks the hp fire um, and then I can still kind of threaten this thing. I go for the overheat, get a crit. I don't think it hugely mattered on the Exploud. Um, if I'd hit that Toxic earlier, it definitely wouldn't have mattered. So, you know, not really a big deal. Uh, I have to sack the Rotom to the Weavile. Um, and now the combination of Weavile and Magina is basically putting me in a terrible position here. Because all I can do is SD. If I had Roost, I might have been able to pull this off. Um, but I think my only play there was to potentially have doubled out to Landorus on... Yeah, no, no, so I, yeah, I did the calcs on this, so my only play, really, was to double out to Landorus on the Magiana switch, which was fairly obvious, instead of Swords Dancing. Um, and then I click Earthquake, get a kill on either Magiana or Weavile. Um, presumably Magiana, and then Weavile comes out, Revenge kills me, um, and then Scizor would have come back out, and that's where not having Roost really fucked me over. <laughs> um, because if I'd had Roost, I would have been able to um, Roost up on the Weavile, and eventually would have just been able to pick it off with Ball Punch. Um, but as it was, I think a knockoff into an Ice Shard did kill me, so even if I'd predicted correctly, killed off the Megiana, and then had to be a 1v1 with Scizor and Weavile, knockoff doesn't kill me from this range, but knock off into Ice Shard with the burn would kill me. So, yeah. Basically, a few poor plays there. Hit my crit obviously doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I'm able to bring out Landorus here, and, like, as I said, I'm able to get my kill. Um, so that gets rid of Magiana, and Weavile's obviously going to come out and just click Ice Shard, um, and pick me off, and that's going to be GG. So, GG to I Make You Rage and the Dallas Rapidash. Um, well played by them. It was very well prepped with that very, very defensive Magiana. Um, defensive Mew and the Tentacruel, that was a wall core that I, my team really struggled to break. Um, but yeah, so that's week one. Hopefully we can bounce back in week two with uh, maybe some better plays and hopefully a little bit better luck in terms of not missing things like Steam Eruption um, and Toxic. That would be nice. Uh, but until next time, peace.